Welcome back and hold on tight as Jim now takes you everywhere. You made your choice a long time ago, Joker. No! You did this to me and you condemned me to that asylum like some bastard child that you refused to take responsibility for! That's why you'll never kill me, Bats. You made me. Daddy! And criminal scum like you made me. <laughs> You're going back to Arkham. <laughs> Now, before you get too excited, Bet fans, this is not a film you will ever see in theaters or on DVD, but you can see all of Batman Dead End for free online all over the place. Simply Google Batman Dead End. And it's all thanks to the efforts of an incredibly talented filmmaker, artist, and conceptual designer, Mr. Sandy Calora. Well, I came across this short, like many other comic book fanboys back in 2003, and for years have been a fan of this unsung filmmaker and wondered what he has done since. Well, searching him out, I discovered that Sandy had actually made a second equally impressive short entitled World's Finest. Here's a clip. force of good in the world, there is evil. Man, said people will die. Every war has its casualties, Clark. Now, the fate of the world will once again rest on the shoulders of Krypton's last son. But this is one battle he will not fight alone. In doing my research, I also discovered that Sandy has done some other incredibly entertaining and visually stunning work, and he had also worked on some of my most favorite films, including Dogma, Men in Black, and Jurassic Park. Well, needless to say, I was impressed, but now is when it gets really exciting for your old buddy Jimbo, and I hope for you too. Long story short, one of my most favorite places to hang out on the net is the Mego Museum. And they've got a member forum there where you can meet some of the most incredibly friendly assortment of people from everywhere who gather to share their love and interest for the Mego line of toys that came out from the 1970s into the early 80s. Well, one of those people, unbeknownst to me, that I have been chatting with all this time happened to be the Sandy Calora. And it's from there that I get to bring you this interview as well as the inside scoop on Sandy's latest project and first full-length feature film, Hunter Prey, which I just watched Sunday, and I'll show you the trailer after this segment. Hmm, tease, 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 gotta wait, gotta wait. But anyway, but that's thanks to the great folks at Maya Entertainment. It's an excellent film, by the way. So, Sandy, before we begin, I must compliment you on your very impressive resume. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I just, I just been, you know, I've been, uh, I guess, at the right place at the right time with a lot of this type of stuff. So, it just kind of you know, needs to work out every now and then. Well, if that's the case, it's quite an impressive luck of the draw. Anyway, talking about Batman Dead End, the response to this short film over the past seven years is incredible. Just the one clip that I pulled for the show came from YouTube with over three million views. And that's not mentioning all the hundreds of other copies posted all over the place online. Uh, was this what you were going for, or was the actual response more unexpected? Well, um, I can say this. The, the, the results were definitely unexpected, and, and that wasn't what I set out to do. Um, at the time, I, I was directing a lot of commercials, um, and uh, some music video work, and I was I was eager to get a feature off the ground, and I was noticing that I you know I just wasn't getting any traction uh, in that area of of you know my career and what I was trying to do. So I figured if I could do something that would draw you know some attention and you know basically give you know people more of an idea of of, of what I could do on kind of a bigger scale that it, it, it might help getting, um, you know, getting, getting a feature off the ground. And also, I chose Batman because I thought, I mean, that was just something that in my mind hadn't, hadn't been done, 
to the degree that I've done it on on film. Uh, you know, anyway, I mean, I, I, you you you'd never really seen a uh, uh, you know a, a, a dark, brooding, like realistic, like creature of the night, you know, shown like that. It would have with a muscular guy who, you know, basically looked, you know, more the part than any of the, uh, you know, the previous incarnations of the character. So it was, it was, it was kind of a two, a twofold thing. You know, I, I, I wanted to see if I could make that work on film. And I, and, and I also wanted to do something, you know, that was kind of like, uh, I don't know, like in the industry, they call it like a sizzle reel or a, you know, just something that, that, that makes people look at it and go, wow, you know, this, you know, this guy could direct a movie. You know, type of a thing. So that was the, that was that was kind of how the project came about, really. Well, considering how protective DC Comics is over their characters, did you catch any flack from them or any other license holder? You know, um, no. Uh, I, you know, I, I got contacted um, by, by both DC and Fox, who, uh, believe it or not, were, were actually supportive of it. I mean, uh, you know, they, they made it very clear that they didn't want me selling it and, and generating any income from it, which, of course, I haven't, and, and that was never the, the, uh, the you know, that, that was never the goal with it. In the end, what are your thoughts on how the Hollywood system works? The, just the studio um, inertia, uh, for lack of a better word, just you know, I went. I had several meetings at Universal about, you know, uh, directing a remake of The Creature from the Black Lagoon. I was also given uh, the William Goldman Shazam script. I was considered to direct that. Um, none of those films, uh, you know, ever got me. And there were actually a few more, to be honest. But, uh, you know, none of those films ever got made. You know, and as far as Creature from the Black Lagoon goes, I mean, you know, I sat down. I met with Gary Ross. I met with all the execs at Universal, I did drawing, I did storyboards, I did artwork and, you know, creature designs and actually did a, a you know, maquette of, of what the creature would look like and, you know, was, was hoping that project was going to move forward and then I was going to move forward with it. Uh, and, and those things just unfortunately never happened. Man, that is unfortunate. I can only imagine how cool a Sandy Calora creature from the Black Lagoon would have been. But you didn't give up, and from those lessons, you've now brought us Hunter Prey, which I am very proud to be able to tune my audience into this really impressive flick. Uh, now, Sandy, as most people understand, films don't happen overnight, and this has actually been quite the undertaking for you and your crew. Um, as we get closer to the U.S. release, what are your own thoughts on this latest Sandy Colora creation? You know, now in, in retrospect, when I look back at it, I mean, Hunter Prey has been, you know, a two-year... Uh, you know, odyssey uh, of, you know, getting this incredibly, like, you know, micro-budget film made and, you know, seeing the response to that now uh, that it's getting released and we have distributors and all that kind of stuff has been has been rewarding. So, I mean, you know, things hopefully will get really interesting now that, you know, the, the U.S. release for Hunter Prey is December 6th. Um, it's already out in the U.K., and a couple of the other foreign territories just getting great reviews. The, the sales are good. I mean, everybody seems very interested in the movie. And you know, I'm I'm hoping that it's just uh, that it's just um, going to lead to like you know bigger and better things. You know, big bigger budgeted films and 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 just you know projects that uh, that 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 are just going to you know allow me to uh, explore you know, some of the ideas I have and stuff on it, you know, with, with just, you know, big budget. So I'm, I'm just not always doing everything on a shoestring, you know, robbing Peter to pay Paul and, you know, that kind of stuff. Well, I do believe we can all relate to that, but seeing how you truly are someone who has danced with the big boys, so to speak, what type of advice would you give to aspiring filmmakers watching this interview? Do the best work you can and, and keep putting it out there in front of people and if it gets noticed by the right people, great. I, you know, I think there's a lot of luck involved. Um, I, I think that a lot of um, being at the right place at the right time, which I, which I guess can boil down to luck. Uh, you know, uh, Harrison Ford was, was once quoted as saying, you know, the most important thing that anyone needs to have in this business is persistence. Just need to keep doing it. Just 
keep showing up every day and keep doing it because it's a tough business and, and you know, th- there are no guarantees. You know, it's like, it, 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 I, I, I'll give you an example. If, if, if you are a phenomenal basketball player, you know, look at somebody like LeBron James, okay? You come out of high school, you can play ball like that. I, I mean, it's, it stands to reason that every NBA team under the sun is, is going to want this kid. In Hollywood, it's not necessarily like that. It's like, you know, you, you, you'll have somebody that goes out and does something that's incredibly brilliant and is obviously very talented, but all the studios aren't knocking down that guy's door. You know, I mean, it's just, it, Hollywood is, it, it, it's, it's a weird business. It's almost like its own little ecosystem and subculture unto itself. Well, thank you so very much for your insight and chatting with me, Sandy, and best of luck with Hunter Prey. And for everyone out there watching, you can read my review of this really cool movie on the show's website at, T- at this show's website at TKOA.com. And then you can pre-order your copy of Hunter Prey right now at Amazon.com. Also, you can check out Batman Dead In and all of Sandy's incredible work by visiting his website at Calora Studios. Dot com. Now, coming up in 60 seconds, we'll take a look at all the really cool places I'd like to take you here, there, and everywhere next week. And plus, here is that exclusive trailer for Hunter Prey. you've seen their billboard and maybe even checked out their show, but next week you'll get to meet the minds behind the Doug and John Show. Plus, we'll take a road trip through time to the Ozarks Medieval Fortress, but when we go everywhere, we may not be able to get in the water. I hope you enjoyed this little journey to here, there, and everywhere with me. I'd like to invite you back the same time next week for another 30-minute television journey as I take you here, there, and everywhere. In the meantime, if you've got a person, place, or thing that you'd like to learn more about or see on the show, or if you are a person, place, or thing that would like to be on the show, drop me an email at tko at windstream.net, or you can mail me a letter to Hey Jim, care of TKOA Television, 500 North Main Street, Suite B in Harrison, Arkansas, 72601. I'd love to hear from you, so until next time, I'm sure we'll see each other here, there, or everywhere. So long, everybody. Jim Buchanan's Here, There, and Everywhere is a Lone Producer Studios production in association with TKOA Television. To learn more about the show, log on to TKO8.com.